Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 54. Tomorrow, the 14th of May 2024, I start my prostate cancer treatment at the hospital. Needless to say, there may be some gaps in the videos, but I'm only booked in for five days radiotherapy and tomorrow is the day when all the planning starts. My main cancer treatment starts on the 30th of May. I frequently make these top tip time videos when I don't have sufficient time to film, edit and voice over these videos. When I go into the hospital for the treatment, there may be some gaps, as I don't think there will be any machine tools or video editing equipment in the hospital. And without further ado, it's top tip time. In this episode, I'm working on the reversing bracket of a Stuart 7A steam engine, which doesn't really fit where it's supposed to fit. Although the reversing bracket fitted OK, there's a bit of a problem. I can't get any steam into the steam chest because the bracket's in the way. And why is the bracket in the way? Well, it's because the engine was built back to front. Really, the steam inlet should be on the other side of the steam chest. First of all, I remove the bracket and scribe a line on it like this. Then it's over to my old bandsaw with a very blunt blade at the moment to cut along the scribe line. Because the blade is blunt, it's wandering about all over the place. I'm having to angle the piece so the cut follows the line. Note to self, change the bandsaw blade at the earliest convenience. Once I chopped the part in half, I cleaned it up on the belt sander. Now all I need to do is make a longer part and silver solder it to the bit that I've cut off. So it's back to the blunt bandsaw and I'm cutting a piece of brass and you will notice that I'm cutting it by holding the piece of brass up on its end. By doing it this way, the cut is going to be at 90 degrees to the main piece of metal. And in no time at all, I end up with the piece that I need, which is nice and square. Here I'm just mocking it up against the steam chest. The next thing to do is to scribe some lines on the piece of brass that correspond with the positions of the existing holes in the steam chest. Then I take the piece of brass over to the drilling machine and first of all I go through with a centre drill followed by a twist drill. This is clearance size for 7BA. I repeat this process until I have three holes drilled in the piece of brass, which hopefully will correspond with the positions of the holes in the steam chest. The next thing to do is cut the piece of brass to the correct thickness. I still have the quarter of an inch diameter cutter in the milling machine, so I may as well use that. It's time now to join part A to part B. I'm using my brazing hearth and my blowtorch to silver solder the two parts together. After silver soldering the part, as usual, I let the part cool to black and in this clip I'm quenching the part in some water. And just in case you're wondering, the skin on top of the water is some overspray because I paint near this tub of water. I suppose it has its benefits, having a skin of paint on top of the water, at least it stops it evaporating. Now it's time to profile the part using the belt sander. In this clip I'm working on the area where the new piece meets the old piece. Once I clean and polish up this part, the joint should be invisible. I've already checked that the holes are in the right place, so the rest of this is plain sailing. I put a couple of bolts through the original exhaust flange, and now, using a scriber, I'm marking the position to drill a larger hole in the centre for the steam inlet. After accurately centre drilling the part, right in the middle of the scribe circle, I'm drilling all the way through using a 7 of an inch twist drill. Now it's time to bolt the part to the steam chest and see what it looks like. A quick test fit of the steam chest and as you can see, everything's fine, it fits perfectly. So now it's time to take out all the bolts, because I'm going to have to clean up the part in the acid bath. When making components for steam engines, whether it be piping or parts like this, it's really important to make sure that you remove every trace of the flux residue. So now it's time to put this part in the acid bath for a few hours. Here's my acid bath full of a very weak acid. As you can see, the bones have not yet dissolved. I think maybe I need to increase the concentration. This is kettle descaler called Kill Rock K. And here is the finished special bracket that I made. Not only does this bracket support the reversing gear, it also allows a steam inlet to the steam chest. A few viewers commented and said, well, why didn't you block up these holes on this side? and make the steam inlet on the other side of the steam chest, well the answer to that is because it would look terrible. This at least is fully functional. I'm securing the existing exhaust flange to my bracket. The problem is the thread in this exhaust flange is not very good at all, but it's okay as a guide for the tap so I can tap all the way through the brass part and all the way through the steam chest. 
and that's why I drilled the hole in the brass bracket 7 seconds of an inch, which is tapping size at 4 quarter by 40 threads per inch. After the tapping operation, I blew away any swarf that was present using an airline. A lot of people ask me about this. Well, don't you worry about the swarf going inside the engine? My answer is no, not normally, because I usually do this, but I don't put it on the videos. I do not recommend using an airline to blow metal particles away without wearing breathing equipment and eye protection. Over now to the lathe to make a threaded adapter. This is a piece of phosphor bronze, although I think it's really alum bronze. It's quite hard to cut this stuff. Look how the chippings are coming off in one piece. This is often a good indication of the correct feed and speed. Oh, and did I forget, when you're machining alum bronze, always use a very sharp cutting tool. Alum bronze is a very strong, very tenacious material, and in the past I've used it for making axle boxes for miniature steam locomotives. All I'm doing at the moment is cleaning up the front face of the alum bronze. Very shortly I'll be using a centre drill to drill this, and then I'm going to drill all the way down the middle. But first of all I need to reduce its outside diameter to a quarter of an inch. And look how these chippings are coming off. This is absolutely beautiful. You can cut alum bronze without coolant, but it's better cutting it with coolant, because if the tool is anywhere near blunt, it will get very hot indeed. In the videos that I make, I do not use coolant, because it would splash onto the camera, and it's very nasty stuff, I don't really like it. It's worth remembering that this is my home workshop, it's a very modest home workshop, with very modest equipment. And I do that on purpose, I could buy a bigger, much more expensive, powerful lathe. But... I work on this old Boxford lathe just to show that you do not need to have really flash equipment to turn out a good product. Over the years, by a multitude of people in very small domestic workshops like mine, many very beautiful things have been created. Really good equipment does help, but it's down to the person doing the job at the end of the day. As you can clearly see, periodically I use a micrometer to just sample the diameter. I don't want to go under a quarter of an inch, and I don't want to be over a quarter of an inch either. This is very close, but there's a bit more metal to take off yet. Don't forget though, it's easy to remove the metal, but it's a little bit more difficult to put it back on. A quick check with the micrometer tells me I'm very close, so it's time to go all the way down the work. When you machine alum bronze, it makes a bit of a squeaking noise, I find, which is a bit annoying, but at least I'm getting a good finish and that is down to the correct speed and feed and a very sharp cutting tool. If you use coolant in the lathe, what's going to happen is you'll be able to turn it at a faster speed and take a deeper cut. But in this case, what's the rush? After all, it is a hobby. It is not a commercial industry. Yet another check with the micrometer shows me that the piece of bar is two thou over the size that it needs to be, which is quarter of an inch. If I set the cross slide hand wheel to a one thou division, then when I turn the part, two thou will be removed from the work. With the piece of bar at the correct diameter, it's now time to use a centre drill first, and here I'm using a twist drill to drill all the way down the turned part. I need this adapter to be strong, so the hole is only 9 64ths in diameter, and this will be perfectly fine for the size of the engine. I should be able to get plenty of steam into the steam chest. Whenever you drill hard materials, it's always a good idea to frequently withdraw the drill bit and then brush off all the swarf. Just in case you're confused, that's a paintbrush and not my beard. The next part of the job is the threading operation. I've used some lubrication for this job and I'm now cutting a quarter by 40 thread using a quarter by 40 threads per inch die. Note to self, when using materials like alum bronze, really tighten the chuck. Alum bronze is a very slippy metal and as you can see, it was spinning around in the chuck. I've engaged back gear to slow the lathe down, and what I've done here is remove the tool post, and that's so I can use the top surface of the compound slide to stop the die holder from spinning around. And once it's threaded all the way down, it's a simple job to put the lathe in reverse, and this allows me to back off the die holder, sort of unscrew it from the newly cut thread. When threading under power, it's not a good idea to hold the part in place. It's not too bad for certain metals, but certainly not for this metal. But being a keyboard player, I need to use my hands for playing keyboards. I don't want bits of fingers all over the lathe. I always keep my hands well out of the way of moving parts. These are quite small machines, but they could do a lot of damage. Every one of these machines is far harder than I am. 
Time now to part off the component. You will notice in the previous clip I've disengaged the back gear so the lathe is now going much faster. In this clip you can notice an audible squeak. That's because the parting tool is really not sharp enough. I got there in the end, I cleaned up both ends of the part on the belt sander and here I'm applying some Loctite 542 hydraulic seal to make sure this part doesn't leak. As shown here, I've temporarily fitted a quarter by 40 union nut onto the end of the thread. So now by using a socket, it is very easy to screw the part into position. But what happens when I reverse it to remove the nut? But thankfully, the Loctite 542 quickly cures. This holds the part in place, so I just slacken off the nut on the end. Then it can be removed. This small green T piece was originally screwed into the inlet manifold, but it was a bit weedy, and also the small displacement lubricator needed an adapter. In the next episode, I'll be showing how I make a specialist T piece to suit the job. I'm initially tightening these nuts using a small nut spinner. I've left one of them off because that's where there's going to be some support for the reversing lever. The special assembly that allows you to fix the position of the reversing lever is the last thing to make. And that's a few episodes away, but it won't be long now. Stay safe, stay healthy, I hope I do. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.